So dynamic background extraction is a method to remove the background of the, any specific image. Um, there are two background extraction scripts in PixInsight, which is automatic background extractor and dynamic background extraction. Um, automatic background extraction is normally not that good. You can use it for a quick preview or, of your background and see strong gradients or something, but usually it's not really good. You want to use dynamic background extraction always. The first thing that you want uh, that you are going to do when you start if you um, press this reset button down here and then it will show you here across uh, across the image which means that this image has been selected for this dynamic process as the default image so wait i'm so i need to cancel this for a second and i need to uh, crop it first a bit because i have some artifacts at the top here uh, on the sides here, on the bottom, maybe two on the right as well. Anyhow, I need to crop this just a bit uh, so I uh, don't factor those this this stuff in in my background, which is like not a good idea. Anyhow, now that it's cropped, I will again start the the dynamic background extraction process. And there are multiple uh, things that you kind of want to do. So um, depending on the image size, you might want to have a larger default sample radius because this is like, look at this. This is a tiny, tiny, tiny default sample radius. It's not that great. So my, if you have a large scale image, you want to increase this to maybe 15 pixel. And uh, then you have a much larger um, box to work with. The idea of dynamic background extraction is to model the background. As you can see, I have a gradient going from the bottom right to the top left, and this is what you want to remove. And to start, my typical background extraction is I don't I don't use generate. You can use generate, but it gives can give very weird results. So I place my points myself. So I start by what 15. So I start by pu uh, putting points at every corner and every edge, like this. So, um, and you want to avoid any uh, points that are on any star. So you want to avoid something like this here. So you put it like like that next to it. Um, same on the bottom right. Same in the center right here. Same at the top right, which is not possible here because there's a star, so I'm moving it over here. And same in the top center. Again, not possible, so I'm moving it a bit to the side. So now I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points, which makes sense. If I run this extraction now and take a look at the background, I see it's okay-ish modeled. I think that would be relatively accurate, but it's not that precise yet because especially at the top right, this point is not going to be taken in any consideration since this is red. Um, this is why I typically increase my tolerance to about one or 1 1.5 and then first resize all to verify that this point is getting taken in account for. What I also do typically is I place another point between each of these point sec sessions, uh, sections, like between this here and this at the top, between this here and this in the middle, and the same for the other side, the same for the right side, and uh, on the bottom half as well, and on Basically, uh, like every edge is getting another point additionally. Again, try to place it not on anything that doesn't look like explicitly background. So now I ended up with points all around the image. What I also typically do is place a point in the quadrant, uh, in each of the four quadrants, like in the middle or something, if there's no other object that could be uh, mistaken as a background. You have to vary uh, depending on your image yourself. 
So now I extract the background again, and you can see it already is more accurately modeled. There is a bit of a darker section here, which kind of corresponds with this one. Uh, top right seems a bit bright. That I think that is because this star is giving us a, a bit of a halo, so I'm moving that point further in to negate the effects of that. Um, if I look at it again, this looks much better now. Top left corner corresponds to that one. The left edge is a bit darker, which kind of makes sense since there's like this more or less weird black shine. And everything else seems uh, to be about fine. So what I'm going to do is typically I'm going to subtract it. And then I'm going to take a look at the dynamic background extracted image. And uh, my stars have a bit, of a, a bit of halos, but I can zoom out and see. Okay, so overall, this background has been extracted and shows up uh, very uh, rather neutral. If this doesn't help and your background is still not fully and correctly modeled, you can increase the tolerance or play around with the shadows relaxation. If you have very strong weird gradients, like from broken flats, you can place more points on the flats and use a smaller um, so, uh, smoothing factor to uh, better model, uh, modulate the resulting background that you can extract from the image. I have rescued quite a few images with uh, the dynamic background extraction that uh, were broken with flats. So um, uh, sadly, I know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, um, if we want, uh, if we want, we can like compare these two images and see how the background has been uh, removed from that image. So as you can tell, this darker corner here and this brighter edge here is gone and it's more of a uniform uh, image. You also see that the galaxy gets more pronounced and you typically want to avoid, strongly avoid uh, getting anything of the object that you're trying to um, like remove, not the, the objects that you want to remove, but uh, you don't want to hit any point uh, with any points in your background. This can happen during, uh, during background modulation. And when you do something like this, it typically looks like something like this. If you have like, if you don't see it properly and you put some points uh, inside the, the, back, uh, the image itself, it typically ends up brighter at some point. And what will happen is that you end up with a dark halo like this. So if your image that you're, uh, that you're extracting, or rather the object that you're trying to extract from the background has such a dark halo, um, you can, you, you have to change the points that you're using for that specific, uh, like, uh, you have to remove the points that are like, too bright, and that uh, it also counts for like anything. If you see, if you extract the background, that it ends up like super weird. If I put, for example, uh, a point near a star here, and maybe a point on a star here, and so on and so on, you get a background that is not very well uh, modulated. So you end up with some weird uh, things, like thing uh, like a corner being darker, like this, and then you end up with an uneven background so like you should you see it gets darker here instead of uh, staying constant like on the other image yeah you know, on, on the more or less properly extracted background so yeah this is dynamic background extraction for dummies i hope this kind of helped out and please don't use generate please don't put millions of points inside of your image. Don't do that. You don't gain anything from this. The more points you put in that image, the worse the gradients can become. Because the modulation takes in, I don't, I don't know, it's a something complex math thingy, uh, doing some, I, I have no clue how exactly, this is some math function shit, whatever. Just if you put too many points in, you get a bad result. So try to keep them. You can't get away with 
one point in every corner if you have a very uniform gradient. Because what you're trying to remove is gradients that are uniform. You don't try to remove ununiform gradients, typically. Yeah, so that, about, that was about my rant of placing too many background extraction points. And that's, I think that's about it. If you have further questions, hit me up on Discord and I'll try to uh, reply to you guys whatever you need. Thanks for watching.